what is going on you guys Woo! hell yeah out on the bike again every time i go hell yeah it reminds me of um tyrese in too fast too furious where he does the yui at the end when they're trying to win the uh two muscle cars I think it's the Hemi and uh, the Z28, something like that. Uh, he does a U-turn and goes, hell yeah! What I thought I'd talk to you guys about today is trusting this. Trusting this down here. Because trusting your peripheral vision is something that you need to do on a bike, man. It is something that you have to just learn to adapt with your your peripheral vision it can take in stuff you don't have to be physically looking at the object to know it's there your peripheral vision will pick it up your direct vision will go to it then you deal with it uh, a lot of riders especially the beginner riders and i can tell this because you see them looking over the nose of their bike especially if they have the clear visor you can tell where the eyes are uh, most of them are looking at the nose of their bike That's a no-no Don't do that man uh, Because if you're looking down there, you're not seeing what's in front of you And that's how a lot of accidents happen. A lot of motorcycle accidents happen that way Now, say XVM 500 in front of me slams on the brakes like this learner is, right? They do that and if I'm looking at the nose of my bike, I don't see any of this I don't see any of this you see so, if I'm looking down there, they're slamming on the brakes, I react too late. There's actually a guy, he made the news, went into the back of a van, uh, because of, I'd say that reason. Uh, if this guy ever sees this video, he may be able to um, argue with that. But I'd say, it's just not paying attention to what the hell he was doing. He wasn't looking ahead, he didn't notice that the traffic had stopped, you could see that the traffic was stopping. Uh, even behind a ute like that, on the, I think he was on a higher sung, on a higher sung, you can see through that, through the back window of that ute, you'd be able to tell what's going on. Um, I'd say he was either like in autopilot or daydreaming or just looking over the nose of his bike. Doing that, man, it's, it brings your reaction time to the nose of the bike. That's what it does. Uh, you, if you're looking ahead, like I'm looking way to the top of that hill at the moment. I don't even know if the GoPro can see that far because the GoPro is not that good with distance. But I'm looking way ahead. All this down here is getting taken in by my peripheral vision. All of it. Um, so you see that on the side of the road. You see something like that, a hazard. I'll be looking ahead. I'll glance down for a second, counter steer it, and then move on. That's what I do. There's no point looking down here, man, because most of the time, you're, you're gonna hit it. If you're moving at 100 kilometers an hour, the chances are you're gonna actually hit it. Like if you're looking over there, looking over the nose of your bike, you're moving that quick, you can't actually physically react in enough time. Uh, whereas, if you're looking ahead, you can then plan. You're riding along going, righto, coming up, there's a blue plastic bag on the side of the road. You know, and then you have more than enough time. You have about two, three seconds, which in bike speak, that's a lot of time. But if you're looking over, I'm like, shit, gonna move. You know, you, you, it's, it makes you jerky. It makes you abrupt. You know, it's, it can be fucking bad, man. It's not a good thing to do. So do, if you can, I know it's hard. A lot of dirt bike guys tend to learn this early on because you have to on the dirt bikes. You have to, um, you have to learn how to do this on the dirt bikes because if you're looking down on the dirt bikes, you're going to worry about so many things. You're going to worry about wheel ruts and stuff like that. The other thing too is your bike can actually handle a lot of things, man. Like if you're looking down, you're taking in all the details of the road. There's cracks in the road, stuff like that. Like potholes and stuff, don't run over them because that's not really fun. But cracks in the road and changing the road, your bike can actually handle some of that stuff, man. That bit coming out of there was a change in gradient about, probably about that much in the road. So, base of the road and the other base. If I was looking down at the road, I would have gone, oh shit, 
You know, that's one hell of a big bump. My bike's not going to do it. But your bike does it. The suspension soaks it up. Uh, you just got to brace on the bike and prepare for it. But that's why you got to look ahead, man. Also, the thing like with hazards. Hazards, you need to... Being on a bike, it's all about prevention. If you're looking down, your prevention time is very, very minimal. Like, you, it becomes very diminished. Like, you need to start prepping for this corner. You need to start braking. You know, trail brake in, make sure there's no cars, make sure they're not going to cut back across on top of you. You know, throttle out. Probably should have dropped down a gear, but because I'm just cruising, I'm not really fast. If I'm looking over at the nose of my bike, I come to that roundabout. I go, shit, I've got to turn. Man, are there any cars? Because I'm not looking ahead. And you become abrupt, you slam on the brakes, you can wash out the front, you can wash out the rear, you can hit the roundabout. And I know that fucking sounds so stupid and stuff, but people have done it, dude. They're like, man, oh shit, roundabout. Oh, we're going airborne. You know, it's it happens. If you're not paying attention, it happens. This is why I tend to get frustrated with on how strict they are with the speed limits and stuff, because you spend a lot of time uh, looking down at your speedo, especially in like high patrolled areas and um, and places where there's heaps of speed cameras and stuff because because it um it takes you away from actually looking up ahead and getting a good buffer time if you know what i mean so and the other things on a bike man if you guys ride or you're watching this video and you're looking at getting into riding i do this a lot for these types of videos a lot for beginner riders man um initially like these sort of even if you're an experienced rider and you've you've never really thought of this but most experienced riders have come across this stuff but hey you learn something new every day don't you that, that's the way it is but i do these a lot for the beginner riders so say if you're if you've never actually um you've never actually ridden a bike and you want to know about all this stuff this is why i do these videos because naturally you'll hop on the bike and you'll look down now i'm already looking at this roundabout probably keep the speed on make sure there's no one coming to the roundabout roll off throttle someone's coming through right another potential person to come through back off come through watch out for a car he, he should stay this inside lane but we form one lane he will follow me, me behind me and i'll just sit behind this guy this guy's wood load you got to watch out for that um sometimes you get stuck behind cars he stayed over for me, but I just couldn't be bothered accelerating past him because you stuck behind a truck and stuff anyway. Uh, most of the time you can get these guys in roundabouts because they fan out into two lanes and they go down into one lane. And this is new, reasonably new bitumen too. So you got to watch the group conditions. They've either redone the lines or it's new bitumen. Smells like new bitumen. Riding bikes, man, it just comes with experience, dude. And the more and more you're on the bike, the more and more you get to know your bike. Because getting to know your bike is another huge part, man. You need to get to know your bike. And then everything else just comes naturally. It's like autopilot. If you don't have to think about it and you just do it, that is where you want it to be. Because in those situations, you can react and you can just do it. You don't have to think about what gear you're in. You just know by the feel of the bike. All this stuff comes with the experience, guys. But the main thing is peripheral vision. Trust it. You have to trust it. Just practice, man. Like, just practice. If you really struggle looking forward, uh, just practice looking ahead. Now, I don't recommend you go out at night and practice or anything along those lines because the visibility is low in... Um, on the best of times you know just try and practice just look because i'm looking at this truck so i've got this truck in my sights obviously because you need to pay attention to what the hell he's doing if he slams on the brake but i'm also looking around him and around that bend i'm looking at where i've got to go sussing out the situation you know is there any if there is there any stationary cars is there any road works is there anything going on up there that i need to see with the with uh cars in front of me i try to position myself sort of offset to them I try not to sit in the center, but sometimes I do. It's, it all depends on what I'm doing. So do with it what you will, like I always say. And uh, if you like the video, guys, give it a huge thumbs up. Go ham on it. Smack that thumbs up button. It means a lot. It helps me out. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comment section. I'm more than happy to try and answer them for you. 
And as always, guys, don't forget to join the ride, subscribe, and if you want to stay up to date with all my latest videos, make sure you hit the little bell icon. Apparently that notifies you for everything. Who knows? <laughs> Until next time, guys. Poosh. Woo!